I love apple pie. I hope you do too. Because uh, what I'm going to try to do today is make apple pie sourdough. Uh, my thought for this uh, was sort of based on um, an apple sourdough we made with apple chips one time that was really delicious, but I wanted to capture a little bit closer to an actual apple pie. So today we're going to wind up like uh, kind of sauteing some apples with sugar and spices and stuff like that and inserting it in. Now for the actual dough though, uh, what I'm going for, I'm making two different loaves today because um, those apples are going to, going to be going in during the lamination and I don't want to do a division afterwards because it might wind up causing a bunch of leaking of uh, the sugary goodness. So uh, two different loaves and I'm going to take advantage of that to uh, do a bit of an experiment. So for both loaves, I'm going just with uh, straight up um, baker's flour and I'm doing two 500 gram loaves. Now where the, it's going to differ will be with the actual liquid. So with the first one here, I'm going with uh, an 80% hydration because I want it a little bit more moist and I have 5% um, vanilla extract going in. And in the second one, what I'm going to be going with uh, is 85% hydration, but half of the liquid is actually half and half cream, so 10% cream. Um, I'm thinking sort of an a la mode apple pie. Um, and then same 5% uh, with the vanilla, and then um, just that baker's flour. So I'm going to go ahead and just start to mix these up here. Probably take a, a few minutes to get everything all uh, ready for the auto lease, and we'll see what they look like afterwards. Okay, well at this point they look fairly similar. Uh, the kitchen smells like vanilla, which is awesome. As far as uh, actually working with them, the one with the cream in it felt a little bit stiffer, even though it had a higher hydration. I find that tends to be the case when you're working with milk or, or cream in your sourdough, so I'm glad I went with the higher hydration on that. Uh, yeah, at this point I'm going to let them just go through an auto lease for an hour or so, and um, then uh, cover it up, and then we will uh, come back to them and add the lemon. Now, while you're uh, going through the auto lease there, it's time to get your apples and spices ready. So I've got, this was a quarter cup of butter for the six apples that I'm working with. Um, and I let that brown up. I'm going to put in my apples. Now I said six apples, but that is for the two loaves. And I'm not quite sure if I'll be able to fit all of this in the bread or not. Uh, we'll see when the time comes. So I've got, I browned that over medium heat and now I am just going to toss them a little bit in the butter. And then we're going to add our sugar and our cinnamon. So for the sugar, this is 10% uh, of brown sugar, just best brown sugar. And then for the cinnamon, it was about a half tablespoon, which works out to a half a percent uh, per loaf. Put that in there as well. Toss it up. And then the idea is just to is just to let these get nice and soft and cooked uh, so that they'll be ready to go into the bread. Smells good. All right, so for us here uh, on that medium heat, it was about three minutes of uh, just letting them kind of gently saute here while tossing them. Um, you want them to just be like lightly fork tender. Bear in mind that, of course, these are going to bake in the bread, so we don't want them to be just complete mush. So once you have them so they're just nicely tender, we're going to set them aside and let them cool down. And then uh, we're just waiting for our leaven. All right, so uh, the dough only got just over a half hour uh, auto lease because my leaven was definitely ready to go, and so I'm going to go ahead and start with that. So I've got a 25% leaven addition, and I already added it there to the uh, to the just the straight up apple pie one, and then this will be our a la mode here. So I'm going to just moisten my hands again, always with filtered water, and start to work this in. Oh yeah. Nice high hydration dough, beautiful to work with. So it'll probably take me about uh, two to three minutes just to get this nicely incorporated. I'll do that to both of them and we'll see what the differences are between them afterwards. Okay, there we are. After mixing for uh, two to three minutes each one, um, again, I found that the uh, non-alamode 
uh, dough was definitely a little bit uh, looser and uh, a little easier to work with while the one with the cream in it was a little bit firmer. But anyway, we're going to let this sit for half an hour and then it's time to add some salt. Well, after half an hour of letting that uh, leaven kind of get a head start on things, it's time to add the salt. So I go with 1.8% salt. So in these uh, 500 gram loaves, that's nine grams each. I'm gonna sprinkle that in, moisten my fingers with some filtered water and uh, then mix it in um, probably over about two, two minutes or so just to make sure it's nicely evenly distributed. All right, so this is the second of two stretch and folds. We apparently had a technical error during the first one, but that's okay because we're doing two of them anyway. Um, and the reason I'm going to do two stretch and folds is because after the lamination, I'm thinking that I might have difficulty doing too much of the coil folding. It might not, uh, might not be too cooperative. So I'll get some nice folds in right now. So I did the one coil fold, waited half an hour. I'm doing this one, we'll wait half an hour and then we will do the lamination when we're getting the apples and sugar and everything in. So I'll cover these up and uh, be back in 30 minutes. Okay, so after that uh, dough had a chance to rest, following the second stretch and fold, I'm going to do the lamination and add the apples. So I'm just spraying down my work surface here with some filtered water and I'm going to very carefully Pop out the dough. Oh, there we are. Okay, and then for the lamination, it's just all about trying to stretch it out as thinly as possible, making a little mat. And the apples are going to go onto that. So I'm just going to keep stretching here for a minute or so. Trying to make a, a rectangular shape here is sort of the idea. And relatively uniform thickness is helpful. I don't know if I can quite call this a rectangle or not, but pretty close anyway. Just about. You're kind of stretching from the center as much as possible. <clears throat> okay, so now. I'm going to take, I, I took the apples and sugar and stuff and kind of divided it up, just sort of eyed it up. I could have probably measured it, but come on now. Let's just do this. Nice little layer. More here. And then I'm going to take it and it gets basically divided into thirds. So just kind of stretch that over top, give a little pat. Time for some more. This apple, goodness, this smells so good right now. I just want an apple pie. It'd be quicker to make than the sourdough. <laughs> and stretch this other part over. Tap that down again. Right in the middle here. Get some of these apples. And the last. Well, I rationed that out quite effectively. Perfect. All that goodness in there. Flop this over, pat it down back in the bowl, cover it up, give it half an hour. I'm going to uh, now do the same with the second one. All right, so time for coil fold number one. Let's see, oh, it's tucked under not too bad. Oh, we lost an apple. Okay, tuck that and tuck this. Oh yeah, the uh, the non ala mode one is folding quite nicely. Mmm, okay. Yeah, as I sort of suspected, the uh, the one with the cream in it is being a little bit more difficult, but it is getting some curl, um, some coiling to it, so that's okay. All right, I'm probably I'll probably do another two of these, uh, 30 minutes in between, and then we will check on. It. All right, so I only wanted doing two coil folds, and I actually did them with uh, about 15 to 20 minutes in between each of them, just because of uh, how fermented these were getting. So I'm starting off here now with the uh, the regular sourdough. Oh, look at that, just unfolding on itself. No problem. Just gonna kind of give it the world's uh, easiest stretch and fold there. Tuck that into it. And I'm just going to do a quick pre shape on it here. Try not to lose too many of these apples. Yeah, high hydration doughs right here. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to consider that. Decent enough for a pre-shape. Just get a touch more under here. 
and take these apples, stick them here, put this on top. I'm gonna let that rest very briefly and uh, then it will be time to do the final shaping. So I'll just quickly appreciate this one and when I come back, we will um, do that final shaping. Okay, Woo. look at this fun dough. Okay, cool, so I'm going to do a final shaping. So I'm going to definitely be using my liners for my banatons here because this could get pretty sticky and I don't want to have issues removing these from the banatons in the morning when I go to bake. All right, a little extra rice flour in here, like so. Just going to quickly do a final shaping. up around and then of course I'll be making sure to uh, also flower the top of this before I set it in oh yeah shaping up really nicely there and a little flower and in we go <laughs> look at all that goodness there okay and let me just now quickly do the second one And a little air pocket there. I want to pop those so we don't wind up with any fun, uh, funky air pockets underneath afterwards or after we bake. All right, sweet. So I'm going to get these things covered up and in the fridge they'll proof overnight and tomorrow morning we shall bake. Well, in case you can't tell, it's Christmas morning. We are dressed appropriately for the occasion. Uh, and it's a great morning to bake some apple pie sourdough. So these have had a nice long overnight proof and I'm just going to flour with some rice flour the bottoms of these. Uh, the oven's been preheated at uh, 500. And I'm just going to get ready to pop these in the oven. All right, and we're just going to flour the top here and get these into the oven. A little simple score. Very fluffy. Give this just a little bit more across the top. So bread number one. These are so inflated. Okay. And I'll do the other one here quickly. Okay. And the second one here. in there as well, get them covered up. I'm going to reduce the oven to 440, give it half an hour, and then we will uncover. All right, so you've had half an hour. So I'm just gonna pop these out. And because of the high sugar content, I'm also going to take these right out of the pan and let them rest on the rack. I'm going to try anyway. There we go. And just try to minimize any scorching on the bottom. Oh man. This uh, a la mode one looks beautiful. If only I could get it out. There we go. Amazing. Okay. You need to smell my kitchen right now. I'll give it another uh, probably 20 minutes at 4.30. Alright. It's actually been 22 minutes. Just wanted to give them a little extra time. <laughs> Not the puffiest breads out there, but um, smells incredibly amazing. Actually, they're more shaped like a pie. Isn't that perfect? Okay, I'm just going to let them cool down for a while and then we will uh, slice in and see how they look and taste. All right, so we're going to cut into these. I'm going to go with the uh, just straight up apple pie bread first, the one that looks a little bit smaller and sadder. Check it out. Yeah, not too bad. You can see the little chunks of apple and whatnot in it. This little air pockets. Definitely uh, worked for not scorching the bottom there. That method, which is awesome. Now, I'm definitely more excited about the Ella mode. It definitely had a better oven spring. Oh, yeah, look at that. 
that's really quite nice. I think that the uh, part um, part of the reason that it didn't spring up uh, as much as some of the other sourdoughs too could be the weight of those apples in there probably played a factor. Either way, I'm going to uh, slice this up and toast it, and we will see what it looks like uh, all toasty. Okay, so this bread is absolutely delicious. The outside, nice and crispy, nice and crispy, but not burnt. The uh, the inside, nice, fluffy, moist. It has uh, just the right amount of apple and seasonings and sweetness without being too sweet. The apples are beautifully tender. Highly recommend that you guys try this. Uh, drizzled with a little bit of melted butter. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. And uh, yeah, if you like it, subscribe. Check out more videos as they come out. And until next time, keep it at 11.